Hey students, Mr. Wirtz back again with another Algebra 2 video here to talk about forms of linear equations. So in this video guys, I'm going over the different forms of linear equations and then how to perform the operations between them uh, to convert them. Um, we're learning this because we're going to set up a foundation for the upcoming linear equations and systems unit. Um, and you will know that you can do this when you can take an equation like 3x minus 2y equals 8 and properly convert it to y equals negative 3 over 2x minus 4. So let's get started. So it's first important to talk about what is a linear equation. Linear equations are two variable first degree equations that describe the location of a line on a coordinate grid. So all of these equations, when graphed, form a continuous line that either rises or descends based on its slope. So the red line over here uh, has a positive slope. It is a fraction, but it is still positive. And the blue line has a negative slope. So despite the fact that uh, we see just, we don't even see a number in front of the x, it is still a negative slope. So um, those are basically what the two kinds of linear equations are going to look like. So we have negative versus positive slope. Um, but what about the rest of the components and what about the different forms? So the first form, the two, the three forms of linear equations, excuse me, are slope intercept form. Um, you guys probably recognize that one. Um, you've definitely seen slope intercept form before uh, in a couple classes, just a few. Um, point slope form. Um, this one is a little more rare, um, but it's used to identify the slope of an equation um, when you're given a point and um, that point is not the y-intercept. And then there's standard form. So the two that we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about slope-intercept form. Okay, These are the two major ones. And we're going to be talking about standard form. And we're going to be talking about how to convert between the two of them. So other forms of linear equations. Um, these aren't like actual forms, like standard form, slope-intercept form. Um, but they're guidelines as to what these equations look like. Um, if you see y equals b, you should know that that's going to be a horizontal line. So it's going to be running, it's a straight horizontal line um, running back and forth. And a vertical line, if you see x equals b, so b would be some number, you're going to have a vertical line on the graph. And um, it's important to remember those um, because they will be, they will look a little different than your standard slope-intercept form or your standard standard form. Yes, I know I said standard twice. All right, so slope-intercept form. You've seen this before. I know that you have. Um, slope-intercept form consists of the equation y equals m times x plus b, where m is the slope and it measures the steepness of the graph. Um, and b is the y-intercept that tells us where it crosses the x-axis, y-axis. Whoa, y axis. Okay, and you can have a slope or intercept that is a fraction. Um, and then if you are, if you find that you're getting a slope that is a fraction, so it's like 3 over 2 or 2 over 3, you should be using fractions, not decimals, to represent those slopes. Um, those fractions are fantastic for telling you how much to go up and how much to go over, or in another case, how much to go down when you go over. Um, remember that the variable x term is the slope, so it's always the coefficient of x, okay? I don't want you to think about m as slope, I want you to think about it as the coefficient of x, and that is the slope. The intercept is always a constant, so it is a number with no variables. So when you're examining a slope-intercept form, make sure that you understand, okay, and you don't just assume, you don't, you don't look over it too fast, Make sure that you understand which of the two terms is the slope and which is the y-intercept when you first see it. Don't assume um, based on placement because the intercept can come first. You could have the intercept before the slope. Um, the slope is always, again, the term with the variable x in it. Standard form is another way of writing a linear equation where all of the coefficients are integers and a is positive. So there's some rules for standard form. It's pretty strict because, you know, it is the standard. Rules. A must be positive. So the number that is in front of our x term has to be a positive number. And in addition, 
A, B, and C must be integers. So that means they can't be fractions. So instead, we have to make sure that anytime we see fractions in our original equation, we're going to have to do some multiplying to get rid of that division. The reason we would use standard form is because it helps us find x and y intercepts really quickly, especially if we're trying to find x intercepts. Um, the standard form also helps us solve systems of linear equations, which when we get to that in unit two, are just going to be incredibly helpful. Um, the systems of linear equations, you'll find that when you have um, standard form, you can use things like elimination or substitution um, in order to quickly find solutions to the system of equations. So, um, converting between forms. Part of working with linear equations is the ability to switch between forms. We must either be able to solve for y or solve for the constant. So take a look at the two forms I have here. Standard form, 3x minus 2y equals 8, or slope-intercept form, y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 4. In standard form, the constant is isolated, meaning we've solved for it. In slope-intercept form, the y variable is isolated. We solved for it over here. So note that I used a blue circle to represent that 8 is by itself, and a red circle to represent that y is by itself. But ultimately, that's the goal. These two forms are equivalent equations. And when graphed on a graphing calculator, represent this line. So these equations describe the coordinates that will create this line on a graph. Both of them will. So we'll continue with how to actually perform these conversions. Here I have a linear equation in standard form. I'm going to switch it to slope-intercept form by solving for the y variable. So my goal is to get y all by itself. The two equations will then be equivalent. So I'm going to start by making getting the variable term y to be all by itself. I don't care that y has a coefficient. I need anything else on the same side to move to the other side. And I can accomplish that by subtracting 4x from both sides. Now, this is where I see the majority of mistakes. All right, I get negative 2y equals negative 8 minus 4x. I see a lot of people that tend to try to combine negative 8 and negative 4x. Um, they actually try to do the subtraction. So remember that in a scenario where we have a constant term like negative 8 and one that has a variable like negative 4x, those are not like terms. So you cannot actually add or subtract from them. Essentially what I am saying is there was at some point, or there is, an invisible hiding 0x term here. So if you want to take 4x from this side of the equation, essentially what I'm going to do is take 0x and take away 4x from it. So 0 minus 4 gives me negative 4. So you can see how the 4x has actually been subtracted from a, a 0x that is there. It was not subtracted from 8, negative 8. You can't do that. So be careful. Don't combine unlike terms. So now to finish the conversion, I'm going to divide by the coefficient of y because it said solve for the y variable. Well, when you solve for a variable, that includes eliminating any coefficients. So I'm going to eliminate negative 2 as the coefficient here. And I'm going to divide everything on the right side of the equation, the negative 8 and the negative 4x, by negative 2. The whole thing. So, on the left side of the equation, I'm left with positive y equals negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. And then when you add or subtract 
um, X's, you, you, is things like that, you can't actually combine them with things like negative 2, but it's totally okay in an example like this to cut it in half. Dividing something by 2 would be the equivalent of cutting it in half. So if I took 4x and I cut it in half, I'd have 2x's, or I'd have 2x left. It's totally okay to divide numbers like 4x, negative 4x, by whole numbers like negative 2, and you don't violate the whole like terms principle. Because we're not actually trying to combine them, I'm just trying to either reduce it if I'm dividing, or I'm trying to uh, enlarge it, like grow it, if I'm multiplying. So in this case, um, I'm going to reduce it by a factor of 2, negative 2, so I'm going to get plus 2x. So the equivalent form here is that y equals 4x plus 2. So these two equations here are equal, and if I were to graph them, I would see that those lines sit right on top of each other. So now I'm going to go the other way. Here's a linear equation in slope-intercept form. I'm going to switch it to standard form by solving for the constant and then multiplying on both sides so that there are no fractions. That's because, remember, multiplication undoes the division of fractions. The two equations will then be equivalent. So the goal is to get the 6 all by itself. To do that, I could accomplish that by moving, removing 5 thirds x from the right side of the equation. So I'm going to remove it from this side of the equation. And then because it's an equation, I must do to the other side what I have done to this side. So I'm left with y take away 5 thirds x plus, oop, not plus, equals 6. So, now I need to eliminate any fractions. I don't see y has any fractions in it, but the 5 over 3x thing is really throwing me up with some fractions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the denominator here, and I see the denominator is 3. At 3. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 3, this by 3, and this by 3. In the y term, I'm going to get, so I'm going to move over here, I get 3y. And then if I take negative 5 and divide it by 3, but then remultiply it by 3, I will essentially be back with 5. So I will have 5x. And if you'd like to verify it, go to your calculator, type in 5 over 3. You're going to see that it comes to uh, 1.66666 repeating, then go ahead and take that amount and multiply it by 3 and you will return back to 5. So um, we have essentially canceled the denominator and then that's going to equal 18 on the other side. But I still have a problem. Okay, The number in front of x cannot be negative. Okay, so the number that is in front of x cannot be negative. I can flip its sign by multiplying by negative 1. So if I take everything, and I do the same thing that I just did, and multiply it all by negative 1, so times negative 1, uh, times negative 1, times negative 1, it will have the effect of making the um, negative 5 turn into positive 5, which eliminates the problem of having a negative number in front of x. So I get negative 3y. So negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5y, positive 5x, equals negative 18. And if you remember looking at the slope-intercept form, we always put the x term in front of the y term, so I'm just going to flip-flop them because it's addition. That's okay. So I would get 5x take away 3y equals negative 18. And this and this form are equivalent versions of the same line. So when graphed, 
um, they would sit on top of each other. So I'm going to do another example here. Um, I went ahead and I looked up how some of the um, bigger like admissions tests, like ACTs and stuff, phrase this question. So if they ever want you to convert, this is how they phrase the question. What is the equivalent equation in slope-intercept form for the linear equation below? So essentially they're telling you, if you parse what they're saying, they basically tell you, convert this. So again, it's slope, I'm going to slope-intercept form. So if I'm going to be doing that, this needs to be, the y needs to be all by itself, okay? Not, not the 4, the y needs to be all by itself. So the way that I can start that is by eliminating any other variables that are on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to eliminate 6x from this side of the equation by subtracting it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right side of the equation, meaning subtract 6x, because I must keep my equations balanced. So I get negative 4y equals 16, take away 6x. Remember, I cannot combine 16 and negative 6x because they're not like terms. So then I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 4. That will have the effect of reducing that coefficient down to 1y, which is the goal. And then I have to do the same thing over here. Divide this by negative 4. Divide this by negative 4. 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. And negative 6 divided by negative 4 gives me a decimal, but no decimals, okay? No decimals here. If you type it into the calculator, you're going to get positive 1.5x, okay? You can't, don't do this. No using decimals. So what we're going to do is we see that it's a negative over a negative. We're going to go ahead and reduce our fraction. So it would be 6 over 4, 6 divided by 4. Um, both of them have a 2 in common, so I can reduce them by a factor of 2. So you get 3 over 2. So that would be the most simplified it could get. So then it would be plus 3 over 2x. If you'd like to rewrite it so that the 3 over 2x is in front of the negative 4, you totally can, um, but you do not have to. And so this is the equivalent form in slope-intercept form of this linear equation. So I'm going to do the other way using the same words, like the same phrasing. What is the equivalent equation in standard form for the linear equation below? Um, again, so standard form is what they're asking for. And it's basically telling me convert this to standard form. And so 15 here needs to be all by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of anything that is not the 15 on the right side of the equation. And I can do that by subtracting 2 over 3x from both sides of the equation. The reason I remember that I'm eliminating it on the right side, but I'm keeping my equation balanced by doing it on the left side. So I get y take away 2 over 3x equals 15. Now, I see that I have a fraction within the um, within this. Well, hmm, if I have a fraction here, I can't keep it for standard form. So I've got to think to myself, what could I multiply the whole equation by that would cause this denominator to be canceled, so to speak? So give do a think over really quick and think about whether or not what, excuse me, what value I can multiply this equation by to cancel this denominator. Did you say 3? Because I know that it is in fact 3. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So I get 3y, and then the 3 cancels with the 3 here, okay? It, it makes the denominator go away. So I get minus 2x equals 45. Now, I'm not done. Remember what I said about standard form. If you're going to go ahead and move this into standard form, 
the number in front of x cannot be negative. So we're going to multiply everything by negative 1 as well. So I get negative 3y plus 2x equals, and then so technically, hang on, I need to rewrite this. Uh, parentheses here, no. Parentheses here, and this would be times negative 1. Equals negative 45. So then we're just going to flip flop the 2x and the 3y because we're totally allowed to do that in math. It's totally okay as long as we bring the signs with them. So 2x take away 3y is equal to negative 45. So these are the two equivalent forms of this linear equation. All right. I have one more problem, and I actually found this problem off of an ACT itself. A bookstore owner wishes to generate $5,000 in profit every month. Each hardcover book generates $5.25 in profit, and each paperback book generates $1.75 in profit. They've labeled hardcover books with H as their variable, and I would... Uh, I would know that it means number of hardcover books sold, so H, whereas P would represent the number of paperback books sold. So paperback generates 175 in profit. Write a linear equation that describes this situation. Okay, so my goal as the shop owner is to generate $5,000, and I'm doing that by selling hardcover books and I'm selling paperback books. However, all right, I'm not making $1 per hardcover paperback or hardcover book. I'm making $5.25 per book. So it's 525 times H plus I'm generating a dollar and 75 cents per paperback. Oh, it was good until that last parenthesis. So here is the equivalent linear equation. This would be standard form, okay, because I have two variables here. This would be standard form that describes my profit as a linear equation. Now, if I wanted to rearrange it, then I could go ahead and do that. So in order to actually figure out how many books I'm going to need to sell, I'm actually going to have to rearrange this equation so that one of the variables is by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into slope-intercept form, and I'm going to choose P to be my Y, my y uh, equation here, or my Y variable. So I'm going to subtract $5.25 times H from both sides to give myself uh, 1.75P is equal to 5,000 minus $5.25 times H. And remember, P needs to be by itself, so I'll divide by 1.75. And I'll divide everything over here by 1.75 as well. So on the left side of the equation, I would get paperback books by itself. P is equal to, so 5,000 divided by 1.75 is 2,857.14. And that's going to keep going on here. Um, minus, and then 525 divided by 175 as well, is 3, minus 3h. So I could then, subs uh, with this equation, I could then do some system of equation solving, but we're not going to go ahead and do that right now. All we're going to do is just stick with this. We've converted it. Um, to figure out how many paperback books he's going to need to sell, he's going to have to take the number of hard hardcover books that he has sold, multiply it by 3, and take that amount from 2,857. That'll tell him how many paperback books he needs to sell in addition. So that's it for today's video, guys. Um, today we defined linear equations as an equation of the first degree. The graph of a linear equation in two variables is a straight line. We explored the two different forms of a linear equation from slope-intercept form and standard form.
Um, we converted our forms of linear equations to the other using algebraic manipulation and the skills involved to do so. And then we practice writing and converting a linear equation to model a scenario involving profit. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.